In this video, we're going to take a look at what you should be doing in the front seat and how you can get a little bit better. Stig Reyes, Town 6, you're clear to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engage in south to north, left in, right out. Alright guys, welcome aboard the front seat of the H-64D and today what we're going to do is just kind of go over uh, the steps that I take to make sure that the aircraft is ready to go. Uh, obviously in real life there's a, a ton of stuff that the front seater needs to do uh, even before the aircraft uh, takes off the ground. Uh, but there's not so much in DCS just because a lot of things aren't modeled. Uh, but we will go through all the steps and just see if maybe there's something that you're missing or something you haven't uh, thought about. Uh, I've seen a lot of questions here and there on forums and Facebook, uh, you know, things that people are kind of forgetting to do and then they're wondering why something's not working. So we'll just go through all the steps here. We're going to start over here on the weapons page. And the first thing I like to do is just go over to the utility page for the weapons. And just make sure that everything is on, particularly your laser. Now, when you cold start the aircraft, uh, you're going to have to go in there and physically turn on the laser. If you're hot starting, uh, it's going to be already turned on. So just make sure that little circle is filled in. And then after that, I'm going to go up to the ASC page, uh, go to the utility page for ASC. And once again, just make sure that the radar laser warning receiver also has that little filled in circle that it's turned on and just making sure that everything is set up for our chaff. All right, after that, we're going to go take a look at our TSD and particularly our show pages. So we've got our route. We can uh, verify that we've got the route in there as required, uh, make any changes we need to. But we're going to go to the show page and just get that set up for me. Uh, and one thing that I always turn on and I recommend everyone else does is turn on your pilot cursor. Now, of course, you've got your cursor that kind of starts off. Uh, over on your left MPD. If you need to move it, you just double tap it to the side that you want. So I can push it against the wall, double tap it to the left, and it pops over there. And double tap it back to the right. So now I've got that cursor. But when we turn on pilot cursor, uh, we'll see the pilot's cursor also moving around as he uses it. And uh, I highly recommend that the backseater turns on the CPG's cursor. Uh, that way you can use it to sort of point things out on the map if necessary. Uh, another thing that I don't always turn on, but I will turn it on infrequently in flight, is cursor info. And as you can see, as I move the cursor around, you're going to see the grid change. You're going to see elevation, all that data uh, distance away from you. Uh, and that can be very helpful in the fight. Now, don't forget to also go to uh, attack phase and just make sure that your show, show pages is set the way you want. And one thing I always turn on is the current route. That way it still gives me that navigation data and I can sort of reference things from uh, known waypoints. Our right, next thing we want to do is take a look at our weapons page and just make sure that everything is set the way uh, that we want that we've got the LRFD set to the proper code again we just go up here to code and we've make sure that this is selected LRFD and we can change our code to whatever we need if there's a code that we have to use that's not on this list uh, we can just go to frequency we can pick whichever one we want so if we wanted to change uh, golf to uh, we'll just say five uh, two 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 and hit enter and that'll enter that into the uh, frequency and now we can select that for our LRFD or we can change our laser spot tracker as required. Now, of course, this is not operational uh, at the time of making this video, but hopefully soon we'll get that in uh, later access. And of course, you're gonna go through all your weapon systems, making sure they're set up the way that you want. Uh, typically leave it 10 rounds on the gun uh, mode to normal. Uh, missiles, we wanna make sure again that our laser uh, code that the missile is searching for is proper. So don't confuse these two, this can happen a lot. You know, this is your laser spot tracker here on the left. This is your laser rangefinder designator, but this is what your missiles are looking for. You, so you can see right now that our missiles are coded to look for alpha, but our laser rangefinder designator is set to golfs. Now we don't have that set up properly uh, within our options. So what we can do is go to our channel, we can hit golf, go back to channel, and now our missiles are set to look for that code. So if this is a little bit confusing to you, that's okay. It, it can be very confusing, uh, especially for new guys. Go in there and play with the buttons and it'll start to make sense to you. All right, additionally, I want to just make sure that I've got the proper uh, missile set up. Sometimes I've found the aircraft wants to go to RF, even though we don't have any RF missiles on board. So just make sure that that says Sal for some active laser and, uh, you know, just leave it to norm, trajectory, direct, unless you're planning to do some uh, lock on after launch shots. Lastly, we'll go take a look at our rockets. Uh, if we've got different types of rockets set up, what we want to do is select one of those early because if we uh, was the rockets, it, the next thing it's going to do is ask us what type of rockets we want. So we're going to go ahead and get ahead of that. We'll go ahead and just prepare our PDs because if we need to do something uh, immediately, I'd rather have PDs up than illumination rockets. Uh, we can also set our quantity over here. So now we're going to fire two 
uh, rockets per impulse of the fire switch. Uh, now we can set it back to one. Uh, typically just leave it at one or two, uh, depending on the type of rocket that I'm firing. Additionally, we can take a look down here at our acquisition source, and this is going to change throughout flight. And I know this is frustrating for people. I get a lot of questions about, well, is there a faster way to do it? And the answer is no. There, there's not really a faster way to change your acquisition source. It does make sense that there would be some sort of switch that you could quickly, you know, rotate through them. I will tell you in real life, it's it really wasn't a problem. Uh, I think it's just easier in real life to reach up here to the MPD and switch things. Uh, not to say that it wasn't sometimes a chore. Uh, but I think in DCS, the, the difficulty might be exacerbated just by the fact that most of us probably use our mouse or something like that. Uh, but, uh, no, there is no other way really to do this other than to go to the MPD and push the buttons. Uh, so typically what I'm going to do here in the uh, front seat is I'm either going to select my own helmet or I'm going to select the pilot helmet site. Uh, for right now, we'll just select the pilot helmet site. And then as I slave the tads, now the tads is slaved to wherever the pilot is looking. Uh, I'm going to deslave, so now it's going to move wherever I want it to. Alright, so speaking of the TADs, what we can do again is just making sure uh, that everything is ready for the fight. And that includes making sure that the TADs is operating the way we want to. And uh, just checking out the FLIR uh, and Day TV. So we've got our Day TV, everything's looking fine. We're going to go back to our FLIR, we can check our polarity. And depending on the time of day, depending on the environment you're in, uh, you might prefer one over the other. Uh, and what you're going to do is uh, just kind of play around with the level and gain. Just make sure that everything is optimized the way that you want it so that you can see a little bit better and uh, find those targets. And don't forget while you're messing with the level and gain to go ahead and change the polarity as well. And you might find that things look a little bit better after you've made some adjustments. Now if you are planning to go on a night mission or extend your operations into night, uh, you wouldn't want to do the uh, same thing with your TADs and Penvis and just make sure that everything is optimized the way that you want it. All right, the last thing that I'm going to set up in the front seat, and again, we're talking about DCS. We're not talking about it in real life because there would be a lot of other things that I'd need to be doing. Uh, but the last thing that I'm going to do is just make sure that my frequencies are set the way I want them. And of course, you go to the comm page, there is a ton of stuff here that really doesn't matter to you. Uh, just go down here to manual at uh, uh, B1 and you can just manually type in the frequencies that you want for your radios uh, and just ensure that you're set up properly. All right, now that we've got everything set up, typically I'm going to leave a weapons page up and the TSD, remember to take us off the show page. Uh, that way I can help do uh, navigation for the backseater and also I just have an understanding of what's going on with the weapon systems at the time. And uh, depending on how I want to do things, I could either leave my HDU up or I could use my TADs. I could put my TADs in the HDU, you know, however is comfortable for you. Typically uh, during the day, uh, I would just bring up my HDU and leave it up into flight symbology until we get a little bit closer to where the action's at. All right, so now that we're off the ground, uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, once we're in the uh, area that we can arm the aircraft, I'm going to go ahead and bring the aircraft to arm. And something that I learned uh, very early on in my career after watching a, a couple things go wrong with arming the aircraft is I'm going to make sure that the aircraft is not pointed at anything that I don't want to hit. Uh, I have seen aircraft uh, actually fire their weapon system as soon as the aircraft was brought to arm because there was some sort of uh, electrical problem either in the fire switch or something with the weapon system itself. Uh, so typically like I would not uh, with the aircraft pointed at this town, I'm not going to bring the aircraft to arm. Uh, also, if my wingman was, let's say, you know, I was trail and I had a lead aircraft in front of me, I would just make sure the nose was not pointing towards him uh, before I arm the aircraft. But nothing is was. Uh, we're not pointing at the town anymore. So I'll go ahead and bring the aircraft to arm and just ensure that the backseater brings the CMOS to arm because sometimes they forget uh, it's good crew coordination to just double check and make sure that things are set up appropriately. All right. So other things that I could be doing again is navigation. So we're going to go over here to route. We're going to bring us up direct to waypoint two since it didn't cycle for us. And now we can see that waypoint two is set at that hill uh, off in the distance. And we'll just uh, continue on at this point since we're so far away from the enemy contact. You know, at this point, I'm just kind of making sure that everything's prepared, coordinating with anyone that I need to. And then once we get a little bit closer to the combat, we'll transition into how to hunt for targets. Now, as we're getting closer to the target area, there are a few things that we can be doing to get the aircraft ready to get into the fight in the uh, best way we can. 
Uh, and one of those is do some analysis of the terrain. Now, sometimes you're not going to have all the map data that you want. So we got to kind of blow the map out a little bit here to see the terrain. Uh, but you can see that we've got waypoint two is uh, vicinity, this hill, which we're heading towards uh, right over there. And then we've got our target area uh, a little bit further to the uh, southeast. Uh, but what I can do is just, again, analyze the terrain, take a look at the map and figure out that I've got, uh, looks like some more high ground here. Uh, we've got the uh, demilitarized zones. We know we've got a wall up here. Just basically just assessing the terrain and trying to figure out what's the best way to come at this target and uh, making any sort of directions to your backseater who at this point, he's kind of just taking you along for the ride. He's just getting you into the fight uh, so that you can put warheads on foreheads. Now what to do with your TADs? Uh, some different ways of thinking about this. Again, during the daylight, I personally don't like to have the TADs up on the HDU. I think it's very distracting and just kind of hard for me to see what's going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, depending on how you turn up the uh, level and gain and the brightness, you know, it might work for you. Uh, so just kind of play around with that a few times and see what's best. Uh, but right now I'm gonna just going to turn the uh, iHads off. But one thing I can do is go over here to my acquisition source and I'm going to set it to Gunner's Helmet Sight and then I'm going to Slave. So now the TADS is looking wherever I look. Uh, and if I see something, let's say that we see something interesting over here at the uh, lake, I'm going to hit the Slave button. Now I'm going to look down and you can see that the TADS was looking roughly uh, at that lake and now I can manually move it around and, and uh, continue to look at whatever I was looking at. And then whenever I'm done doing that, I can just hit slave again and now it is following my head motion. Now it's not going to obviously get you exactly onto a target, uh, but it can get you close enough and uh, just kind of get you in the area and it makes it a little bit easier to use if you are, uh, if you like to use the screen like I do during the day. Now, of course, another thing you should be able to do uh, very quickly is go to pilot helmet site and slave uh, because if the pilot sees something that you're not looking at, it's a lot faster for you to just hit that pilot helmet site on the acquisition source, slave over to it, and then uh, and then uh, move to manual mode other than trying to talk on to the target uh, from your pilot. All right, so as the front seater, you are not just a bystander. You're not just a observer. Uh, you're a part of the crew, so you need to be telling the backseater where you need him to go. So I want uh, our backseater to move uh, to the back side of this hill as best as I can. So I'm gonna be giving him directions so that we get on the far side of the hill and keep it between us and the target area. Now, as we're transitioning closer to the target area, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start slaving the site over to where the target is. And we've got that pre-plotted at waypoint three. So I'm gonna go to my coordinates page, waypoints, and I'm gonna Click on the left side button there. And now I've set that waypoint three as our acquisition source. So now as I slave, uh, we can see that I've brought the site over there. We're gonna keep this hill between us and the target area. And uh, I've got the site slaved over there. So now I can start taking a look and uh, and see what we can see. We're probably still a little bit too far away to see anything, uh, but at least I've got it set up so I can very quickly move the site over there. And then I'm just gonna continue to direct the uh, backseater to get over into position. You can see that we've slowed down quite a bit. I'm gonna slow down quite a bit more uh, because I don't want to close in on the target too fast. I want to make sure that, you know, as we're getting there, uh, we've we've got eyes on the target area and we've assessed the area between here and there because there could be other enemies between us. And additionally, what we should be doing is setting our TSD to attack phase. Uh, and get, one of these reasons is to get around a bug where if we laze and store that it shows up as a waypoint. Uh, we want to have that as a target point. Uh, so we've got that set to attack phase. Now if we laze and store, that'll show up as a target point in our system. All right, so again, just playing around with our different settings with FLIR and with uh, our TV, uh, we can f try and find the uh, the best way to observe the targets. We're just kind of changing around through FLIR and uh, our polarities. And we've got a hot spot here. We can see some, some cold vehicles out there. So now we're finding our target area. And again, we want to laze and store because we want to maintain this the situational awareness in case we have to break off real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've got the aircraft is armed. I'm gonna laze and I'm gonna store. And you can see we got target zero one. That's because we went into that attack phase and we've stored that in the system. Now you notice I just kind of stored uh, vicinity, the target. Um, there's two kind of schools of thought when it comes to lazing and storing. One is that you could laze and store uh, every single one of these targets that we find. Uh, the other is that we're just kind of lazing and storing the target group. Uh, just really depends on uh, you know how many targets you're looking at and what your plan of attack is. Are you sharing this information with someone else? 
Uh, so right now I just want to get uh, oriented on the target area. So I'm just kind of lazy that way in case I lose it, I can quickly get back to it. And then what I can do if I want is I can uh, get refinement on all these targets. And again, you know, we're, we're zoomed in right now. We're at 8Ks with the TADs, uh, with the FLIR. So I'm going to change it to day TV. You can see that we've got a lot, a lot better zoom during the day TV. So just be sure to play around with the uh, TV and FLIR and just figure out which one is best for you. And now what I can do is the same thing. I can laze and store these targets individually. I'll wait for this tree to get past here and I'm going to laze and store. So target two is one of these uh, missile launchers. And I can zoom out and try to find some other targets. And you can see I'm using the LMC very sparingly. Uh, not trying to make a whole lot of motion with it. Uh, but we've got this truck here. I'm going to laze and store him as target three. Turn off the LMC and continue to scan for more targets. Now, of course, another thing that we should be doing is not just recording this information, but reporting it. And all the information that we've got so far is going to be right here in our coordinates page. So we go to our coordinates page. And we'll go to cord and you can see all those targets that we stored these are the actual targets so target three was that uh missile launcher so here we've got the grid and elevation we've got all this data uh, we can expand that get even more data but we can pass this on to someone else who uh, may be supporting us or a higher headquarters here's that truck and here's this expanded information uh, so one of the things that we definitely want to do is we want to pass information as much as possible to the rest of the flight to other supporting elements the headquarters uh, because if we get shot down and we don't share this information, then that information dies with us. So it's very important uh, to share that in a uh, real world scenario or if you're doing a uh, big mission with a bunch of different players. All right, so of course, through all of this, the, the backseater should have your video page up so you can kind of see what you're looking at. Uh, but it's uh, very easy for the backseater to either get too focused on that and kind of let loose sense of what they're doing or not really maneuver the aircraft the way that you need them to. So you need to be ver verbose. Uh, with the backseater let him know that you need him to stop or move to the right or move to the left whatever so that you can maintain observation on the targets but also uh, not put yourself in a bad position and it's really a shared experience between the front seat and the back seat of keeping the aircraft safe even though primarily of course the backseater is looking outside he's the one that's uh, keeping you from running into wires and trees and things like that but you've got the best situational awareness of the targets and you're probably going to know if they're uh, looking at you or going to shoot at you long before the backseater does all right, so once you've decided that you are going to engage these targets, again, it's a conversation between you and the backseater to make sure that the aircraft is in the proper position. If you need them to climb, if you need them to turn, uh, to get on the target, uh, just have that conversation and start maneuvering the aircraft together as a crew. Coming left. Coming left. Coming left. And the last piece of advice I'll give you in this phase is aim small, miss small. So I'm going to use my day TV so I can get the most uh, zoom in on the target. And once we've got it established, we're in constraints. I'm going to laze and I'm going to fire. At this point, the backseater should be uh, giving us a stable platform, but also avoiding any return fire that may come in. And at this point, we would just rinse and repeat. Uh, if you need to push the aircraft back out and re-engage, then of course, go ahead and do that. Uh, but right now, we'll go ahead and get a second missile shot off on this guy. I would say a good conversation to be having right now is range. So right now, uh, I've got the best situational awareness of how close we are to the target area uh, because I'm constantly using the laser. So I can let the backseater know that you know we're, we're three kilometers from the target, uh, that he may want to turn out at a certain point. Or it's a conversation that we may change weapon systems at a certain range. Coming left. All right, guys, so coming off the target area, we're heading back to base, uh, really just kind of cleaning up things, uh, make sure that uh, we give some navigation data to our backseater. So I'm going to put us up to direct waypoint one back to the airfield again, sharing information. So we destroyed uh, the targets at waypoint uh, three so we could report that data. We give up uh, the type of weapons that we destroyed. Uh, so we destroyed, uh, I think, three trucks and and two missile launchers. So we're just passing that information along and developing the situation for follow-on teams 
Uh, they're coming in behind us. Uh, but we've got all that data here that we saved in our uh, coordinates page, uh, setting up our waypoints. And really just at that point, once we get into uh, friendly territory, making sure that the aircraft is safe and that the aircraft is ready to be put to bed. Anyhow, guys, I hope this was a little bit helpful. I know there's a lot of stuff that can be done in the front seat. And the, probably the number one question that I get these days is uh, how, how, coordination between the front seat and the back seat. What does it look like? Um, I guess the only answer I can give you is it looks like two people talking and trying to work together towards a common goal. Uh, there, There is no uh, the front seaters in charge, back seaters in charge. It's a crew effort. There are times where the front seaters voice uh, is more... I guess you could say important than the backseaters and vice versa. And of course that can change in an instant based on enemy action or something that's happened with the aircraft. Uh, but don't be afraid to tell your uh, opposite seat what you need done and uh, just work together and try to put the aircraft in the right place. But don't, uh, you know, it's not a competition of who's in charge of the aircraft necessarily. Of course, one of you is the pilot in command and is ultimately responsible for the aircraft. And it doesn't matter what seat the PC sits in. Uh, they are ultimately responsible, and then, of course, experience plays into that. Who's more experienced? Who knows what's going on? Uh, but don't discount someone else uh, just because of their experience level. They may see something that you don't, or you may become uh, complacent and they haven't. So just communicate is the only advice that I can give you guys uh, for being good at the front seat and good at crew coordination. Anyhow, if you got any other questions, put them down in the comments below. I appreciate everyone who watches the video and leaves uh, your kind comments. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take it easy.